everybody, and welcome to episode 375 of Good Luck High Five. That's right. This is a podcast for you if you play Magic the Gathering, especially from the safety of your own home. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And on today's episode, uh, exciting news for everybody who's been waiting for Ikoria Lair of Behemoths, because we are here to give you our hot predictions before That's previews right. start on the 2nd. Our wildly accurate, very clear-headed predictions. Yeah, I feel like we are normally, our our hit rate is something like 98%. Yes. Yep, um, absolutely. We just, we come up with ideas that are feasible, that are definitely possible to put into action in Magic that make a ton of sense for the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... All of these things. After every one of these episodes we record, Megan, I feel like I can't get R&D off the phone with me, begging me to have yes. a job over there. Absolutely. They're like, wow, these ideas are just so good and so on brand for Magic. <laughs> So we will give you our hot takes on what we think will be coming out in Ikoria Lair of Behemoths, which um, we'll be releasing, you know, this month. It's going to be ready to play on Arena and Magic Online, even though you can't go in and play it in stores. Um, plus, the preview season is abbreviated. We're going to know all of the cards by the 10th. Yes, which is basically tomorrow yeah. in what time means now. It's also three years from now. <laughs> So true. So true. It is both tomorrow and three years from now. <laughs> Time has no meaning, Megan. Time has no meaning nope, anymore. It truly does not. In case you can't tell from listening, Megan and I are still uh, practicing social distancing and are not recording in the same location. Um, so, yeah, that's still that's happening. very true. Just FYI. It's very weird. And wow, I miss hearing people's real voices that aren't digitized through my headphones. I know, right? Oh, my gosh. I really, really do. A real human voice. Can you imagine? I know. No, I can't. I don't know what that sounds like anymore. We're also going to be talking uh, about, well, we're going to be taking your questions. We're going to make yes. this kind of a mailbag episode as we uh, sit here in our homes. Uh, so, yeah. you know. I'm really excited. We already have one question about pizza rolls. Ooh, oh, I'm so ready for that question. A topic that we really haven't touched on enough recently. Near and dear to my heart, uh, uh, yeah. for sure. N not near and dear to my person because I ate them all. I know I ate all of my pizza rolls before going into quarantine. What an idiot. Oh, I ate my, some of mine after. <laughs> <laughs> I was very tired of cooking. Yeah, I've been cooking a lot. Oh my gosh. I've never, I'm not used to doing this many dishes. Me, oh my, I hate dishes. I hate doing dishes. I don't have a dishwasher. And my, like, my kitchen is not big, and my drying rack is quite small. Yeah. And I hate it. I And they never stop. They never stop. They don't stop. They don't stop. Um, There's just always more dirty dishes. Do you know that my least favorite chore is going to the grocery store, which now I, I, I actually have to do more <laughs> than usual because normally yeah. I don't cook very much for myself and I go out to eat a lot. But two, everybody at the grocery store hates being there just as much as me. So everyone's in yeah. the same boat. These days, everyone is, is at least like commiserating with you. They're like, oh, we all also don't want to be here because this just feels like a giant germ factory. Factory. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. Those uh, Acoria <laughs> quest, those Acoria predictions and your questions. Thank you so much, yeah. by the way, for sending them in. Um, but before we uh, kick off the show here, I want to say thank you to everybody who's joined our Patreon family and is helping to support us in these tough times over on patreon.com slash GLHF magic. Today, if you're listening to this on Tuesday, is the very last day that you can become a patron during Patron Pledge Drive Month and get a very special limited edition, beautiful Good Luck High Five enamel pin. Yeah, I'm showing it off here on the video version uh, of the podcast, and it is gorgeous. Um, it's beautiful. It says how much we love you and appreciate you. Yeah, it's raised, you know, like... Yes. Just FYI, you can you can, you can't tell that, but it's it's raised enamel, so it's it's really really nice, um, and you get it if you pledge at five dollars a month or you raise your pledge by five dollars. Thank you so much to everybody who's already done so. We are now at 719 patrons. My goal yes. by the end of this drive was 750. I'm still optimistic that we can get there, Megan. So close. We are so close. So close. Yes. And and um, do you know what? If we get there, um, I will buy Maria. It is that time of year, a bag of Reese's eggs. <gasps> Reese's eggs! 
<laughs> you guys, I need those Reese's, Reese's eggs. eggs. I need them. Please become a patron. <laughs> Please. <laughs> You've just reminded me. I will brave me. the grocery store to oh, buy wow. you Reese's eggs. They're the best thing. And they're the best kind of Reese's eggs. Reese's trees, they're fine. Reese's hearts, very bad. Uh, Reese's pumpkins, wow. pretty good. Reese's eggs, Reese's number one. Reese's hearts are bad. Look, Maria, I just have to like pause you briefly yeah. because I feel like... <laughs> I'm going to say something controversial right now mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. They're all the same Incorrect. thing Incorrect. in a different shape. Nope. Not right. <laughs> not true. <laughs> there is a hierarchy and I'm pretty sure it goes eggs, trees, pumpkins, hearts. And if anybody disagrees with me, they can let me know. But I, I think there are people out there who will respond to me and say, yes, Maria, you are correct. That is the accurate ranking. And I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Well, if you want to confirm Maria's ranking of Reese's of Reese's shapes, yeah, yeah, which are all just the same thing. <laughs> well, well, eh, disagree. And get her a bag of the best ones, the Reese's eggs. Become a patron. Become a member of our Patreon family today. And in addition to helping Maria eat Reese's eggs, yes. it really does just mean so so much to us. Um, especially in these very strange days that we find ourselves in. Yes. And um, it means so much more now because uh, Megan and I, of course, had the cancellation of our of our work. So it, it really does help support us and keep us going, be able to pay these bills that we otherwise, you know, might not be able to. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks to you. And um, we've had people calling into our hotline as well. And we've got another phone call that we can play now from from a listener. Cute. Hello, Megan and Maria. I am proud to be your fan and supporter for many reasons, but I will try to pick only one or two dozen for this message. (laughs) On a serious note, one of the highlights for me over the last year was watching Maria do coverage in Hawaii. I also loved story time with Megan during Theros recently, and I want to thank Megan for encouraging me to read more and shop locally. I rely on the upkeep to break down all of the magic updates into news I can use. I count on both of you to make me laugh and help me enjoy my favorite hobby. My weeks would not be the same without you, especially right now. Thank you also to the fellow one percenters out there who are making this show possible and sustainable for Megan and Maria. I hope this pledge drive reaches its goals. Be well. Thank you, ladies. Yay. Thank you, listener. Thank you so much. Um, That line is still open. It's 612-DORP-601. Give us a call. Um, Yes. Please give us a call. Um, Be a, you know, come be a dorp with us. And thank you as well to Card Kingdom. Uh, Cardkingdom.com slash GLHF is our affiliate link if you want to go there and support them during this tough time. I can't say enough words about how great of a company Card Kingdom is, and they're proving it now during Mm -hmm. this time. Like, they've had to suspend a lot of stuff. Uh, Their shipping is on a break until... They say April 9th, but, you know, we'll see what actually happens there with the expansion of COVID and all these kinds of things. But they're still paying for health care for their employees mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And I just, I mean, what a, yeah. what a great thing. They had a like, show. What a, what a wonderful company. Yeah, you can check out a stream that they had last week and that they'll have this coming week also yep. um, called Magic is Gathering. And you can use the hashtag MTG together. Um, to talk about stories of like how people are playing, what creators are doing, how this is impacting people in the magic community right now, um, which is just like such a lovely testament to how much they care about their community and how much they're a community first organization and company. Absolutely. So so check it out. Um, we tweeted out a link to it. Um, we retweeted their like YouTube version of it if you didn't catch it live so you yeah. can hear us talk a little bit more about that and and you can hear yeah. us speculate wildly about what we think animal crossing is oh, because yeah. neither of us play but there was a question about it oh my gosh and somebody made a good luck high five shirt in animal crossing and it's the cutest thing ever thank you oh it is so cute <laughs> oh it's great it's great but what yeah. is animal crossing i don't know have i thought about how i wish i had a switch right now absolutely i feel like you would like animal crossing megan 
I feel like I probably would, you know, but also, also I just play magic. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Also, I just open up, open up my computer and play some arena. Great. Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're here to talk about Ikoria and our guesses for what's going to happen. Prediction time. Yes. Okay. So, Maria, let's start off at the very top with we have heard that there will be 12 kinds of counters. Yes. 13 if you include loyalty counters. Oh, boy. In okay. Ikoria. <sighs> let's so make So, we need to know what kind of counter, like, we need to start making some guesses. I want to hear... 13 or 12 kinds of counters. Are they new counters? That's my question. I don't know. I can't imagine that they're all new counters. But probably some of them are. But I likely some of them are. Okay. Yes. Time counter. Okay. Time counter. Great. Which we see in suspend, right? Hold on. I'm going to... Or yeah. is that a suspend counter? Uh, great, great question. I actually um, don't hold know. On. Let me, let me look. Okay. Let me Megan's look it up. investigating. I am investigating. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to write down time. Time. Number um, one. Two. Um, uh, beef. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, beef counter? Yeah. Beef counter. That is like how. Okay. How so suspend has time counters on okay, it. Okay. Great. So I'm going to guess that. Yeah. And then I'm going to put beef. Um, that's beef. like. <laughs> Beef counter. Beef okay. counter is like um, the creature gets uh, fatter. So it's like plus one, plus one. <laughs> okay. 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 But it's called beef in Aquaria. All right. Um, wait, here's here's mine. Okay. Um, I want to add, like, obviously we know that foreshadow counter is one of them, right? Yeah. Yes, we do. Like they've talked about that. Um, okay. Here's a spicy one for me. I want there, there's going to be a plus one, minus one. Oh, cool. Okay. So uh, that's four. that's one of my guesses. Uh, plus one, minus one. That's that's complicated. Okay, plus one, minus one. I think there's going to be something called um, a damage c counter. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, which like is that, like that marks like permanent damage on a creature. Yeah, marks permanent damage. All and right. I guess that you could call away. that like a minus one, minus one, but it's not really. It would be like. A minus one minus or minus zero minus one because it's still yeah. the same. Well, maybe it wouldn't have the same strength. I don't know. Okay, whatever. It's called damage and it marks the damage <laughs> on the creature's um, butt. Okay, here's mine. Mine is uh, mutation counters. We know that like mutate is going to be some kind of mechanic somehow. Yeah. And I think that things might be able to mutate more than once. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, mutation counter. Uh, number seven, I've got, um, beasts. Um, uh, remember what happened when you showed off that dinosaur in your hand? Prey counters. Oh yeah. All right. I like it. What creature was that? Do you remember? Um, Tets, Tetsamok. Yeah. Tetsamok, the dinosaur. And you'd show it from your Tet hand. And like, what did you, could you do? You had to pay for each creature you're putting a prey counter on? Hold on, hold on. I'm going to find it. Yeah. Because that card was sick. Okay. Tetsamok Primal Death. Yep. Um, black. Reveal Tetsamok Primal Death from your hand. Put a prey counter on target creature. Activate this ability only during your turn. When Tetsamok enters the battlefield, destroy each creature your opponents control with a prey counter on it. Ah, uh, yeah, that's so right. So I like it. Okay. Prey counter. Prey counter. I'm Great. feeling actually very confident about that one. Wow, that's a pretty that's a pretty good one. Okay, what do you got? Um. Okay. Oh wow. <laughs> We've gotten. We're only seven in. We're only seven in. <laughs> um. Wow. Oh boy. Um. Maybe hunger counters. Stay with me. Okay. Okay. What happens is, um, a creature's hunger can grow throughout the game because it's not being fed, um, and. If it gets to a certain number of hunger counters, um, which I guess is just turns, then mm -hmm. something happens. You know, like it gets hungry, so it gets enraged okay. and it okay. like it bites another creature or whatever. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's a, here's a really wild one. Okay. <laughs> um, this this one is experiment counters. Oh. Um, which is 
it's like plus one plus one um but what happens is like you you roll two dice um and one is like minus one minus one and one is plus one plus one and whichever one (gasps) is higher you put that one on the creature i love that one so it's like you're roll like uh, you're literally rolling the dice on like you're experimenting on the creature. Is it going to get bigger or is it going to get smaller? I love it. A you plus. Don't know. A plus. Um, I'm going to put evolve on this list because that seems like it would be in this set, don't you think? Yeah, for sure. I could see it. Okay. Um, um or what was the other like simic mechanic? Um. Oh, monstrous. Oh, yeah, monstrous for sure. But I think monstrosity just puts plus one, plus one counters on it. Yeah, it does. Okay. It's not like a kind of counter. Yeah, it's not a kind of counter. I mean, technically, um, I think experimentation is also not like... Anything like that's not just yeah. plus one, plus one, or minus one, minus one. But whatever. Um, but whatever. Uh, I'm still saying it. It's a cool idea. How about... What else to do with big beastie boys? Ooh, a rap counter. <laughs> rap? You know, because um, they're beasties. Um, what about... Okay, okay, okay. Tell me about the rap counter. What happens uh, when the creature gets a rap counter is that um, after you cast it, you have to make up a little rap about this creature. So you have to be like, hey, I just cast a beast. And you, my opponent, are the least good at magic that I've ever seen. I'm the greatest player that's ever been. And then if you have a successful four stanza rap, that creature fights another creature. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's... There you go. That's really... There you go. That one's free, wizards. That one's free. <laughs> um. Okay. Wow. I'm just... um. You're just overwhelmed by my ideas? Yeah. Okay. And here's mine. There. Okay. Um, mine is battle counters. Yeah. Um, which uh, t- track the number of of times that something has been into battle. Great. I love um, that. And if and if it's successfully, it has like a threshold where it's like, oh, like if this has five or more battle counters on it, like it survived five or more battles, then like something cool happens. Like it mutate, like it gets like a bonus or something like that. Yeah, that's great. So like it's done damage this many times or whatever. Or yeah, blocked. exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's like you put a battle counter on it every time it attacks or blocks. Great. I love if, that counter. Yeah. And if like it, it can have like a num- it's like a threshold of ba- battle counters. So we've got time, uh, beef, foreshadow, uh, plus one, minus one, prey, uh-huh. hunger, damage, mutation, rap, experimental, evolve and battle. OK, I have one more. <laughs> Great. Why not? Let's go. Um, This one is like. This one is a clone counter. Ooh. Um, and it's based on, you know, the idea that, like, if you clone something, the reason why it has a shortened lifespan is because, like, the ends of the DNA that you cloned are already kind of, like, unraveling or corrupted or, right, whatever. Like, yeah. what makes us age? Like, that same thing has happened. So the idea being, like, as they experiment and mutate these things, like, the threads of DNA are getting worse and worse. <laughs> um, so it's, like, the number, it's kind of, like, Oh, I'm trying to think of trying to make it different than the mutation counters of like the number of times it is mutated, but of like, it's like you can make a copy of a creature, but for each time you make a copy, like it gets, uh, it gets a mutation counter. Great. And then if it has like two or more mutation counters, it dies. Not <laughs> mutation, but of like, we're, clone. We'll it, clone. like clone counters. Yeah. Clone counters. Okay. I love it. So, like, you can pay to clone it, but if you pay to clone it too many times, it just dies. It's just like actual science. Yeah, exactly. Just like actual science. Great. Great. Okay. <laughs> so, we've got all the keyword counters. Um, Oof. Yeah. We did a really good job. Yeah, uh, we did. We did a very good job. Oh, did you say what you thought foreshadow is? Because I like your idea. Oh, so my idea for foreshadow is that it's like um, it's like suspend except the card is face down. So only you know what it is. So it's kind of like, it's Great. a combination of like morph, morph and suspend. A plus. I love it. Um, yeah. So what about yours? What's your foreshadow? 
my foreshadow is um, similar to when was this Lorwyn when you could each turn over the top card of your deck and which one had the higher mana cost you won the clash oh yeah I think it's just called clash yeah clash so it's like that um, except for the fact that you get to scry before it happens Ooh, all right. I like that. So you go in with a little bit better idea if you're going to win the clash or not, but you're still okay. not sure. Yeah. Exciting. All right. Okay. So those we know are happening in the set. Well, you know, we know that there's a lot of keyword counters. Um, yes. We also know one of the mechanics, like we said, is called mutate. So Megan, what do you think mutate is? Oh boy. Okay. Here's my hot take. Great. Is that things will be able to mutate more than once. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like, remember, like when creatures leveled up? Oh, yeah. Level up creatures. Yeah, like yeah. the ones that level. Um, it's kind of like that, except that it becomes like significantly different each time it mutates. Like it, cha it could change. It can change like creature type. It changes power toughness. Like it changes abilities. So, so that's my. Yeah, that's like. um. It's what like you, level, except it changes more about the card than leveling did. And leveling, you had to pay a certain mana cost, and then it would activate this ability. Yeah, exactly. So, like, you could pay, and usually it'd be like, it could be like levels one through three, um, it it taps for one green mana, yeah. and it's a one one, and then levels like four through six, it taps for two green mana, and it's a four four or whatever. Great. Um. So, yeah, like that but it changes even more. And even the level cost might be like the mutation cost might be different for each one. It's not necessarily like a static mutation cost. Great. I love it. That seems there's my take actually likely. Um, <laughs> my take is that one of my favorite mechanics from Theros was bestow and yes. we didn't get it. And so I mm -hmm. feel like they must've been very sad. Like somebody in R and D was like, Oh no, we need bestow to come back. And or, yeah. They couldn't put bestow in it because this they already saw this coming down the way. Oh, there you go. Hey, yeah. now my now that makes even more sense with my prediction. Yeah, um, yeah. okay. But it's like um a combination of bestow and um augment from unstable. Yeah. And so what's going to happen is you're not like augmenting in the way that you did in Unstable where they kind of overlapped or whatever, but it's basically like, it's basically bestow, but not like, um, bestow granted a certain ability or whatever, I, like flying. If you bestowed Nimbus Nyad onto something, it got flying. Yeah. So what I'm trying, how would it be different than bestow? <laughs> Maybe I just think it's bestow. Yeah. I mean, it could be. Like, it could be, like, bestow, but, like, if it falls off, it doesn't become its own creature. I'm trying to think. Because um, it's got to, like, mutate into that, right? Yeah, it's got to, like, com like yeah, like, sh sh shift or change into that thing. Um, Like, it could be, okay, this is wild, but All what right, if it's, like, go. bestow, but instead of going behind, like, an aura, it, like, goes on top of it? Oh, shoot! So it goes, it like completely covers it up. And then like, Great. if that creature dies, then you get the bottom one back. But why would you get it back? Oh, you're right. Maybe you just lose both of them. Yeah. Flavor wise. You flavor should wise, you should just lose both lose of them. It. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So you there's like it. some creatures that can only be cast. And it could be that it's like stuff that's like, it's like a six, six for three mana. Yeah. Like Uro over here. Am I right? Um, but it can't be cast like by itself. It has to be cast as a mutation. Oh, I love it. Mad scientist. On something else. Exactly. Okay, great. We've solved it. Um, That's my hot take. So we now know uh, what that mutate does. We now know what all the keyboard counters <laughs> we are. All, yes. We all, we know exactly what <laughs> foreshadow is. Yep. For sure. <laughs> um, are there any other mechanics that you think will be in this set with our chance to invent them now? Oh, yeah. Or if there's any, like, old mechanics that we think might come back. Oh, yeah. Good point. Well, I mean, I just said that you're going to... Well... You think Evolve. I said I Evolve. I think we could see... Although, like, I don't know. Would they put Evolve and Mutation in the same set? I don't know. As, like, different versions of the same thing? I also said Clash, kind of. Except it's a new Clash. Yeah. It's called Foreshadow. I, I kind of would like it if, like, Clash came back. It makes that sense. It makes kind of sense, cool. doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. 
That's like a really nice, that's a nice hot take. My other hot take was that there was going to be um, a way to have a sub game in which you could play creatures onto the battlefield like normal, or you could play them into the arena and uh, your opponent could play creatures into the arena and they are like fighting each other in the arena. But I don't know like what the benefit to you is of putting (laughs) them in there. So like, I still have to work that out. (laughs) it's like a separate battleground yeah and the reason the idea came to me was i think it was called interstellar brushwag or something like that oh that's right yeah from the mystery boosters from the mystery boosters where it was played into its its own like like uh, other plane of existence and yes it couldn't enter combat with other stuff but it could still attack that player yeah i remember okay yeah yeah. so that's what i'm thinking something like that but i don't know what the benefit is and i don't know what the drawback is but i i really like the idea of a different area existing other than the main battlefield yeah Uh, Um, have fun coding that by the way yeah there you go yeah exactly have real have a good time with that on arena (laughs) (laughs) i'm a real jerk um yeah all right let me uh, I like the idea of Clash coming back. I'm just trying to think of, like, any mechanics that come to mind that are, like, really, um, what was, what's the one from, um, Shadows Over Innistrad where it, like, they busted out of other things? Oh, yeah. Like, the big Eldrazi's where you had to, like, you could sacrifice something and it would be cheaper? Oh, yeah. What the heck was that? What was it? Um, that's bugging me that I can't remember what that was called. Yeah. Emerge. Emerge. Yes. Okay. I could like, I don't know. I could kind of see emerge happening. Emerge, monstrosity, evolve, clash. These all seem like very likely to me. Like big, they're like big monstery. Monstery sorts of things. Yeah. So what was it? Emerge. Emerge. So that was one. Yeah. Where like you could sacrifice something and pay a cheaper cost. Yeah, I'm here um, for Emerge. Yeah, and then it was, it, they were so, like big old beasties. Great. All right. All right. Hey, I, I think like these it. are uh, pretty good predictions so far. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Maria. So they've said Magic's seventh egg is in this set. Yes. We have. I have to know, what do you think the name of the egg is? Great question. I think it's called, um, Mark Rosewater is really excited about this egg, so I'm going to call it Mark's Egg. <laughs> and okay okay uh what happens is when it hatches um you get to design what that card is wow <laughs> you're really you're really going wild <laughs> they they hire me to be what they call the idea person um uh-huh. anyway it hatches and you get to design the card for, uh, in that moment but your opponent gets to edit it <laughs> <laughs> so it can't be too busted yeah yeah okay here's my guess okay. it's a nightmare egg oh that would be cool it's a nightmare egg and when it dies um your opponent has to discard a card and you can get back a creature from either graveyard that is actually good <laughs> <laughs> and it's like spooky right it's not like it's not like hatching its own new thing it's just yeah. like bringing it's like necromancing things i like that a lot very spooky <laughs> nightmare egg yes and we already know there's gonna be a nightmare squirrel yeah exactly that's what made me think of it great you know. nightmares are you so excited for the otter creature type to be real i really am otter it's gonna be so cute yay Oh, all right. right. Any any other Ikoria predictions? Um, I predict that it's going to be sweet. Yeah, because oh, I also kind of want there to be a Kraken egg. Oh, a Kraken egg would be great. Yeah, like a Kraken egg. And in my mind, when the Kraken egg dies, <laughs> it sounds like you're saying crack an egg. <laughs> By the way. Great, 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 great. Um, when the crack and egg, <laughs> crack and egg yeah. dies, um, you get to bounce a creature that your opponent controls, and you get a kraken. Okay, love it. Yeah. Crack and egg, get in the set. I, I I'm really excited because I love creatures and I love creature combat as a, a limited fan. I think mm-hmm. this set is going to be super 
good for limited because it's going to be creature based uh, and the like, combat and stuff is going to be really integral to how the set plays out. So I have yeah. high hopes for this as a limited environment, knowing, at, you know, almost next to nothing about it, but knowing it's got to be creature heavy because it's about yeah. big beasts. And I like big, like flashy creatures. So I'm all in for that. Yep. Classic Maria. Hey, everybody, it's time to dip our hand into the depths of the mailbag. What will we find in there? Something spooky, something fun, something slimy. Let's find out. Oh, man. The first thing I'm going to do is no one asked this question, but I have to talk about it. What? Because you there's just no there's not enough sharing of things that are happening while we're all in self-isolation. Okay. okay. But I drafted a Theros Beyond Death deck yesterday that was busted really yes i had two utropia the twice favored great and i don't know why how i got two of that card if you are do if you are not taking that card if it gets past you early and just like slamming blue green enchantments um reevaluate your draft strategy because that card is so busted and so it was literally just like two of that and then like a bunch of random enchantment creatures Great. And it was, oh, I had four cap copies of Starlet Mantle. Holy cow. So I had uh, so many opponents. By the time I cast the third one, they were so pissed of at me. Of course they were. Nobody they has were three of that. so mad about it. <laughs> um, I went 7-1 with this deck. It Great. was It was absolutely busted, and I loved it. And I just had to tell somebody because I was playing it, and nobody gets to know these days. Oh, so anyways, that's my draft story. Four Starlit Mantle. I can't believe you played Four Starlit Mantle. I mean, if like literally all my deck was was like the two Utropia, Four Starlit Mantle, and then like a bunch of any like any enchantment creature that I could get. Okay. And then like a couple of like other creatures to like fill it out that's great i love it It was so good all right hit me with that hot first question what do you got okay jimmy asks have y'all learned any fun new recipes to cook yourselves in this quarantine wow great question jimmy yeah um i made some lentil soup the other day that is really good it is exceptional it's vegan Um, It has a lot of coconut milk in it. It has shredded coconut. And then I like, I love fresh ginger. I like doubled the amount of fresh ginger that you're supposed to put in the soup. It is very ginger spicy. That is, uh, but it is That's like me with uh, garlic. I usually triple it. (laughs) (laughs) I put in a lot of garlic also. Also, I will say, um, I started, this is like my one cooking indulgence is that I started buying the like pre-minced garlic in a jar oh yeah i love that stuff and i love it because i used to be like look megan you know you can like mince garlic get over it but i the fact is that i hate mincing garlic it's so much more convenient yes and it's just a little glass jar of it and it lasts forever yeah it's great i love it yeah maria what you cooking well the other day i made some comedy cookies which Mm -hmm. is i cooked um some chocolate chip cookies for the first time in forever but i did it as a character that i invented during this quarantine named jean <laughs> ann who has a show called cooking for fun which is where we cook for one but we do it in a fun way let's just say <laughs> she's really lonely and you can find her on instagram at jean ann cooks uh because like you know she's she's struggling out there but she made some cookies <laughs> and they were and i was actually very proud of them because they turned out really good um nice but I haven't made anything new, at least not yeah. yet. Not yet. Oh, uh, I made an apple pie and I home I like I make homemade crust and I, I like sick brags, you all. I I'm not an excellent cook at all. I'm like deeply mediocre at cooking, but I'm very good at baking and like I've gotten my pie crust down to like it is perfect. It is uh, so good. Great. It's like super flaky. Um We gotta stop talking and, about this because I am starving right now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Moving god on. Th- somebody just asked what snack what's your go-to snack during this quarantine no! oh okay well we can answer it real quick and then we'll move on from food okay although the next question i have lined up is also a food question. oh my god people are thinking about food a lot during this yes um okay maria what's your snack whiskey <laughs> fair enough fair yep. enough yep how about you um wow mine is i've been I've been baking a lot. So I would say it's like whatever sweet thing that I have on hand. 
um because yeah. i love i love desserts and i stress bake and so i just have a lot of i've had like pie and cookies great and everything great to eat okay um flowery asks we haven't heard about tatinos in a while can you give us an update and tell us if you're eating them in isolation well absolutely we, we already talked about them like i ate That's mine true. before this so i'm definitely gonna need to buy more yeah i was getting so tired i'm like i said mediocre cook and I hate it. And there's so many dishes at the end of it. So I ate the rest of mine because I found half a bag in the freezer. Great. And I was just like, thank goodness, because I did not want to cook right now. <laughs> I like this question. What's your favorite quarantine accessory? Ooh, um, mine is and I will show you all right now. Um, it is my collection of mugs. Great. Um, I this one that I'm holding up right now, I have three mugs from local like potters and ceramicists um and i love all of them and i drink coffee every single day and it is one of my joys to like put it in one of my three beautiful mugs excellent speaking of stuff to drink <laughs> highball mm -hmm. is my coffee and if you want you can order it from their website with the code <laughs> miss maria 50 and they'll give you 50 percent off that's not a joke this um, is just a section where maria <laughs> <laughs> All the stuff that she's doing. My actual favorite accessory is this light bulb that I have in my office. Check it out, which I can change different colors. Yeah. And so at night, I, I like make it look like a little disco in here, um, which is really <laughs> great uh, because I do honestly spend, uh, you know, like almost every waking second in this office. Yeah. Oh, well, focus, focus. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's my number one. It's like if you're in a space, make it as happy and as comfortable for yourself like as you can because yeah. you're in there all the time. It'll help your mood. I know it helped me. Yeah. Um, I reorganized my living room. You can see a little bit of behind me and like moved one of these big plants so that it's like getting a yeah. little bit more sunlight because it was too far away and like cleaned up some space so that there's more floor space around. And it definitely helped my mood a lot. Yeah, for um, sure. Just to like feel feel. A little bit more spacious yeah um okay this is a question that doesn't come from anybody but it's a question that i've really been enjoying from our friend anna which is like what's like a strange more comedic like low moment that you've had oh wow <laughs> in quarantine and i can tell mine because i i have mine and i'm ready okay, because cool. i just talked about my mugs <laughs> And the other day, it's just me, and I own like a dozen mugs because I love mugs. <laughs> and <laughs> just me by myself in my apartment, I took out all of my mugs and I ranked them. <laughs> just, just, I just like so, <laughs> Oh them all up on my counter and and ranked my mugs. That's. <laughs> And, and even in the middle of doing it, I was like, what am I doing? Megan, we need to get you like a really nice mug, like display case, you know, for the wall. We honestly do. And you can put number one and then like move them around as they change. Oh, you can see I do my have... peanut butter in this shot, everybody. That's right. I have a I jar have, like, of peanut butter I have like an open shelf desk. above my sink that is where I put like my favorite mugs so that I can see them and they're not away. Right. Right. But... Anyways, ranking my mugs for myself <laughs> <laughs> is my moment. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have anything too weird that I've done so far because most, I, I don't know. Fair I enough. Don't... Jean Ann is pretty weird. Yeah, the Jean Ann thing is weird. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I honestly, the first time I recorded a video with her, I couldn't tell you why I did it. I just was cooking some beef and I thought to myself, this is ludicrous. I'm cooking so much beef and I'm just one person and it's just <laughs> me. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to record this. And then boom, Jean Ann was born. Yeah. So I guess that, yeah. that is the weirdest. Yeah. Um, Lightfoot asks, uh, what's your favorite local restaurant to support and get delivery from right now? Oh, great question, Lightfoot. Yeah. Um, mine is tomorrow I have a plan. Glamdoll Donuts, which is a donut shop in Minneapolis, is doing curbside pickup where you can text them an order um, for donuts. And they're still doing coffee. And I miss espresso so much. Oh, yeah. So tomorrow my plan is to get curbside pickup of donuts and coffee. And I'm already really excited for it. That sounds great. I am yeah. really excited to um, get some pickup from Dumpling, which is a Chinese restaurant in my area. Um, yeah. And it's going to be really good. Oh, um, yeah. 
Sven asks, I'm still in the process of hashtag GLHF every day, and I'm not to the name change yet. How did that happen? Oh, wow. You're, this you're is late like a to little, the party, man. Yeah. GLHF history. Wow. Okay. So it's actually a very funny story. If you haven't heard it, stick around. If you have, you know, go do something for two minutes. Um, <laughs> so b- basically really early on in Magic the Amateuring, we wanted to change the name to Good Luck High Five. Um, yeah. Just because wow, I forget about that all the time. Yeah. Amateuring is a hard word to spell and it's very long to type in anywhere like to a website or whatever. Yes. And uh, we were playing more and more and we're becoming less and less amateurs. Uh, so we investigated it and we Googled it and we found out that there had been another magic podcast called Good Luck High Five based in Minnesota. Yes. Uh, which had been defunct at that point, I think, for maybe like three years, three to five yeah. years. But we didn't want to get in on it because we didn't want to confuse people this was like within the first year of our show so we didn't change it um and the good luck high five name comes from me thinking that glhf stood for good luck high five on magic online when somebody (laughs) typed it to me i did not know good luck have fun so um eventually we were just like you know what it's time we're gonna change the name anyway and we made the change like how long ago now do you know um it it would be it's been about a year and a half yeah like a year and a half or so um yeah yeah and it just better fits what we do as a show so and it's a lot easier for people to remember and that kind of thing yes um amal gg asks what are you playing in the historic popper event oh gosh jameer surveil which is just like i played that in some of the original popper events and i just really enjoy it it's what I want to do. You just surveil a bunch. You get to draw a bunch of cards, like filter yeah. through your deck, kill a lot of creatures. I'm into it. We have a question on Insta here asking, would we consider a ticketed live stream for a little extra fun and money? Well, like, I think we would just do a normal stream, you know? Yeah. And then people can sub to it. Yeah. Um, we've also been talking about we might be doing um, like a Zoom improv show in the, the coming days slash weeks yeah so we'll be sure to let people know about that absolutely um and have like some donation options open either for us or for local theaters that we're trying to also support during this time uh is it time to unban twin <laughs> you know what yes i'm gonna right. say it i think so megan's like in. yeah it's it's come up modern has come a really long way since they banned twin i think unban it see what happens wow i am not ready to make that uh shake suggestion. it up but shake it up why not man why not exactly um endless potential energy asks collection building on arena for those new to it for brawl historic etc oh great question yeah my so, oh go ahead oh, go ahead oh. <laughs> Jinx. i would say um this is so tough because for me the answer really was just time um and like it's kind of tough to be like hey, like, just take your time. But for me, like, my usual cycle of, of playing Arena um, goes, when I'm not super into the standard format, I don't spend my wild cards. Like, I just let them accumulate. Yeah. Um, and I, I will play a little bit of whatever to get the gold, like, you know, my daily gold challenges. Definitely get then, all of the gold you can, by the way. Exactly. And then, like, once I have enough gold, I'll go and do a ranked draft with gold and accumulate gems, and then I'll, like gem draft a little bit or whatever so like mine my answer is just like i do a lot of drafting but that's also because i really enjoy drafting yeah drafting for sure is the number one way to do it but you've got to be like moderate you know like you've got to like it otherwise yeah that's not going to work out for you but like i like what you said which is i always save my wild cards until i feel like i'm ready to commit to a deck um and then i'll spend them on that but something else that i do which i know is impossible for everybody but at the beginning of the release of the new set i buy the bundle which is a really good deal uh which is which is like 50 bucks and then you will be well on your way to at least making one deck for sure and then if you play and get your gold every day and you do some drafts eventually you'll be able to do pretty much whatever you want yeah that's a really good point yeah Um, so i think that's a worthwhile investment yeah, and honestly, that's about all the money that I put into Arena. Yeah. Is just like 50 bucks at the beginning of a set for those 50 packs. Yeah, I think that's worth it. Um, Yeah, I generally agree. And like my biggest one is like if there's – if it's like Brawl Month or whatever, but there's like not a Brawl deck that you like, 
like don't like don't feel the need to invest in it just like play whatever format you're feeling or whatever format you have access to and like wait until something really speaks to you yeah i agree 100 percent. so um k asks is there a soul sisters deck in historic popper i don't think so okay you pointed out yourself that like all of the payoffs are uncommon or rare yeah i think so, <laughs> so sorry i've really been you know like that deck is showing up a bunch in just like regular historic ranked though I'm out of questions oh. over here. Oh, I still have a couple more. Okay. Um, Aston asks, how is Tommy Lee Jones coping with the quarantine? I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't talked about Tommy Lee Jones we in a long time. Not in a hot minute. <laughs> Should we just see like what's happening in, yeah. in old Tommy Lee's life? Yeah. Google Tommy Lee Jones right now. All right. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna. Google we need to Nicholas know. Cage because he's the other person we keep t- tabs on for oh, you. Oh, yeah. Out there in the Good Luck High Five world. Um, and we hopefully update you, you know, every so often with what's going on in their lives. I just typed in Tommy Lee Jones news. <laughs> oh, oh, I've got I... some news here for um, Nicolas Cage. The first thing is an article from three days ago, which has a great headline, which is Neon acquires Nicolas Cage revenge thriller Pig. <laughs> Ooh. Pig. So that's the name of the, the thriller, apparently. Pig. All right. Um, I... I don't see any, uh, no news, no news. Oh, here we go. Another one. Kesha drops a new song about Nicolas Cage. (laughs) That's the kind of Nicolas Cage news I'm looking for. (laughs) Okay. Um, all of the articles that come up are about how mean Tommy Lee Jones is. How about this article? Nicolas Cage visits his new Orleans tomb while holding hands with mystery woman. (laughs) great great wow that was a month ago though everybody he's probably being safe yeah i i hope so um as far as i can tell literally the only news about tommy lee jones is that he's mean oh tommy (laughs) why you gotta be like that literally i typed in news and there's no news it's just a bunch of articles about how he's been mean to different people oh my god that's your tommy lee news Oh, I've got um, I've got an article here from the Daily Mail. Nicholas Cage <laughs> and girlfriend lather up with hand sanitizer as they enjoy a lunch date in New York City amid the coronavirus <laughs> outbreak. Great. There you go. There you go. Um uh, Starfish asks, what about ghost host? Is corona affecting the dead as well? Ooh, great question. Yeah. So, so ghost host is also practicing social distancing yes. f- since they died, honestly. Yeah. Yes. So they're very um, good at it. Yes. Yeah. Ghost Host is really excellent at social distancing. Yeah. So for um, them, this is like life is like, normal. This is normal life. Exactly. This is just what I have to go through generally. Yeah. Um, okay. I have a couple more. Oh, great. Um, Hans asks, did you know you have listeners and patrons in Denmark? Oh, thank you, yes. Hans. We, one, thank you. Two, we love looking at the map of where people are listening. It's so much fun. Oh, it's great um hi denmark uh atassin asks favorite commander i've been playing a lot of brawl and i love nickel bolus dragon god <laughs> it's so good nickel bolus oh, is great i've been loving um, that grixis brawl life i've been liking uh vona in brawl so Ooh. Um, that lets me play a vampire deck look but at that's, you that's historic brawl so yeah um christian asks Oh, man. I love this. I was telling Maria, I think that we were around for the genesis of this question, yeah. which was like slightly different wording, but like the same spirit. Um, you encounter a strange wizard in the woods. He says that he can cast a spell that guarantees you always top eight every tournament you enter, but you can never win a tournament ever again. Yeah. Do you let the wizard cast that spell and why? Well, we we kind of came up with this a similar question, and every yes. by the way, every magic player I ask is always like, "Yes, slam it! I'm doing it because I'm Cause winning." It, that money. one was that one was you would top eight every time, but you would always lose in the quarterfinals yep. by punting really hard, like super embarrassing, loss. like very embarrassing. Big and punt. I thought that magic players would be like, "No, I don't want to bruise my ego. I I can't handle that," but. Every single one of them told us that they would take this deal. They were like, well, I'll be making so much money. And I'm like, that's dumb. That's a dumb answer. 
Um, but do you know what? I think I would do it. Yeah, you got to do it. though. <laughs> I think I would. I think I would. Oh, great questions. Yeah. Um, and last one over here. Okay. Um, VM Compost asks, what are the pizza toppings that will help you get through the pandemic? Oh, great question. Here's my number one. Ready? Yeah. You're I, gonna, you're I gonna, already know. You're going to create know this list. a thin crust pizza. Okay, that part's uh-huh. important. And then uh-huh. on top of this pizza, you're going to get pepperoni. Okay, stay with me. Mm-hmm. You're going to put onions on it. And uh-huh. then you're going to put feta on it. Okay? Oh, I knew this Perfect was Perfect pizza. There you go. <laughs> Do you know what? I really, I you all, if I'm eating pizza, the truth is I want the most basic classic pizza experience. If it's like slightly fancier i love like a margarita pizza with like mozzarella and basil great um and if it like and i just love basic cheese pizza too megan what did we say about food i'm sorry marie i'm so (laughs) sorry (laughs) that's the last question i've got no more food questions no more Um, questions okay All right, everybody, that's this episode of Good Luck High Five. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We're super happy that we can continue to do the show for you from a distance and that we can maybe provide a little bit of company for you while you're stuck inside. And thank you to the people who have sent us photos of where they were when they were listening to us. Um, That was really cool. I loved seeing that. Um, Same. Tweet them at it. Tweet them at us at Good Luck High Five Magic, which is GLHF Magic on Twitter. because yeah. it really brightens our spirits. And remember, with both us and Card Kingdom, you can tweet just about your experience of playing Magic and being part of the community um, during the pandemic uh, using the hashtag MTG together. Yeah, and find be great. other people's stories using that hashtag also. Thank you so much once again to everybody who became a patron for us. Patreon.com slash GLHF Magic. You've got a couple of days yet to, or excuse me, one day to get in one day. at getting these sweet pins and becoming a member during Patreon Pledge Drive mm-hmm. Month. And but I'm I'll not- give Maria until the end of the week to get those Reese's eggs because okay, I know how yeah. important they are. We got to get to 750, everybody. This is critical. Do you hear me? It's critical. <laughs> um, so we got a winner as well in our Glee yeah. giveaway. I'm trying to find where I wrote their name down on my paper. <laughs> I was I was listening while you talked about it. I know. Did I did I like keep the tab open? Oh, I, I did. Know. Okay. So congratulations to our winner, Joshua from Denver. Joshua Dillman, Yay. congratulations. Please email glhfmagic at gmail.com with your delivery address. So once this is all over, we will send you a beautiful prize package. And a new Gleam giveaway starts with this episode. So go and enter, everybody. What's going on, Megan? I'm just getting the cat. Oh, it's Molly. Oh. <laughs> oh, I heard her. That's so cute. <laughs> All right. That was just, you know, some bonus cat content while we're recording from home. <laughs> Great cat content. Great cat content. Well, uh, thank you so much, everybody. I I miss real people. Yeah, same. Same. You know, time. and we look forward to seeing you someday in real life. Yeah. Same. And until then, you know, stay safe. <laughs> stay safe out there, everybody.